This video will teach you how to format a document in APA style using Word 2013. Step 1. If you are using a school computer, open your internet browser program and type byod.peelschools.org in the address bar. Step 2. Using your student number and password, log in to the BYOD site. Step 3. Click on the OneDrive icon and then click on the new icon, that's the plus sign in the blue circle, and select create a Word document from the pop-up menu. This will launch the online version of Word. This is a stripped down web version of Word and it lacks some of the features that we will need in order to easily create an APA style template. You're going to have to click on the open in Word button in order to launch the full version of Word 2013. Step 4. Now that we've got the full version of Word running, we're ready to begin. Start by clicking on the Page Layout tab. Click on the Margins button and set your margins to normal 1 inch. This should be the default option in Word, but it's always a good idea to check and confirm your margin settings. If your version of Word is using the metric system, 1 inch is the same as 2.5 centimeters. Step 5. We're going to change the font. Select the Home tab and click on the Font Dialog button. It's the tiny little box with the arrow that points down and to the right next to the word Font. This opens the Font Dialog menu. Type Times New Roman in the Font search bar and set the size to 12. Before you click OK, click on the Set as Default button. It doesn't really matter which option you choose, if you change your fonts often, then you can select for this document only. If you use Word mostly for essay writing and school assignments, then you should select all documents based on the normal template. Click OK and OK. Step 6. Now we're going to insert a header. Select the Insert tab and the Header button. Select Blank Header. It's the first one in the list. Press Tab twice to move your cursor to the right margin and type the title of your essay. We're also going to have Word manage the page numbering automatically, so press the space bar after you've typed your title and then click on the page number button and select current position and simple number. Sometimes a teacher will ask you to use something called a running head instead of the full title of your essay in the header. Please confirm with them as to how they want this to be done. At our school, most teachers are fine with the instructions in this tutorial. If you don't need to use a running head, you can proceed with this video. Now go ahead and double click anywhere below the dotted line to close the header. It will gray out and now appear automatically at the top of every page of your essay. Step 7. Back on the Home tab, click on the Paragraph dialog button. Again, it's that tiny button to the right of the word Paragraph. Set your spacing to double and make sure that the after number is set to zero. This prevents any extra spacing between paragraphs. Go ahead and click OK. Step 8. With your mouse, click and hold on the small square slider on your ruler. If you don't have a ruler, you'll have to turn this feature on. The option is accessed on the View tab just click the checkbox beside the word ruler on the menu ribbon. So, clicking and holding, move the small rectangular slider to the two and a half inch marker. You'll see that you've done this correctly when all three sliders move together, the rectangular one and the two triangle shaped sliders. If only one or two of these move, you've selected the wrong slider with your mouse. Click undo and try again. With the slider in the correct position, we're now ready to type the title page. Press enter enough times to move your cursor down below the two and a half inch mark. I usually start typing at around three inches. Type the title of your essay. Just as it is in your header, press enter. The double spacing should be automatic. Type your name, first and last, and press enter. Type the title of your course. Use the full title of the course. For this example, the full title of the course is English, but for your class, it could be something like Challenge and Change in Society, 
or environmental science. Just type whatever the full title of your course is. Be sure to also include the course code and the section letter. Press enter. Type your teacher's name. Please make sure you spell it correctly. Press enter. Type the date you are submitting the paper for evaluation. Now instead of pressing enter a bunch of times to get to the next page, we're going to insert a page break. Click on the insert tab and select the page break button. Your cursor will jump to a fresh new page. Step 9. Move your ruler sliders back to zero, making sure that all three sliders are moving together. On the Home tab, click on the Center Text button and type the word Abstract. No underline, no bold, no fancy font, don't increase the size, don't do anything. APA likes everything plain and simple. Hit Enter and then click on the Align Left button. There's one more thing we're going to do before we start typing our abstract. We're going to have Word automatically indent each new paragraph. You can do this by clicking on the Paragraph Dialog button again. This time, we're going to change the Indentation Special drop-down menu to First Line and make sure that the value is set to half an inch or 0.5. Click OK and type your abstract. Depending on your teacher, sometimes the abstract is on its own page, sometimes it's on the title page, directly below the information that we typed earlier. This is why we use the page break feature, instead of just hitting enter a bunch of times to get to a fresh page. You can go back and edit your abstract as often as you want. You can lengthen it, shorten it, do anything to it, and because you used a page break, your next section will always start at the top of a fresh page. When your abstract is finished, go ahead and insert a page break. Step 10. The next section of your paper is the introduction. We don't type the heading Introduction. Instead, click the center text button on the Home tab and type your full title one more time. Press Enter and click the Align Left button. Your cursor should already be set to indent your first paragraph. Go ahead and type your introduction. As you type, you should see that everything is equally spaced, there are no extra gaps between paragraphs, and the first line of each new paragraph is automatically indented. When you've finished your introduction, the procedures for the problem section, the solution section, and the conclusion section are all the same. Press the center text button, Type your heading, press enter, and then click on the Align Left button and type your text. Do this for each section. There are no page breaks between the introduction, problem, solution, and conclusion sections. At the end of your conclusion, however, insert a page break because we want the references page to be on its own sheet of paper. Step 11. Center your text and type the word References and press Enter. Now things change. We need a hanging indent for the References page, not a first line indent. On the Home tab, click on the Paragraph dialog button again. Change the Indentation Special option from First Line to Hanging and click OK. Type your references or cut and paste them from a citation tool website like bibme.org. If you do cut and paste from a citation tool website, be sure to look over each citation and make sure that the italics and other formatting copied correctly. Put your citations in alphabetical order and you are done. Thanks for watching this video on how to format a document in APA style using Word 2013.